Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick review of King Richard III by William Shakespeare. So obviously this is one of his more famous plays. Uh, got the famous line, my horse, my horse, no, a ho It's got the famous line, a horse, a horse, my kingdom for a horse. I'm sure we'll get to that. Um, these ones, these are the beautiful Folio Society editions. They are really pretty and really lovely to read. Um, but they don't have blurbs, so I can't read a blurb as I normally would. Um, but we have an introduction by Douglas Seal and designs by Leslie Hurry. And the introduction has possibly my favourite opening line to an in introduction ever. It says, Shakespeare is not only a genius, he is popular. Also, he is dead. Great, thank you. Wonderful introduction. And then um, we get straight into the action because we get the now is the winter of our discontent speech and that's act one, scene one in the street of London, um, Richard Duke of Gloucester and um, it's a very famous speech so I'm going to go ahead and, and do it for you. Now is the winter of our discontent, made glorious summer by this son of York and all the clouds that lowered upon our house in the deep bosom of the ocean buried. Now are our brows bound with victorious wreaths, our bruised arms hung up for monuments, our stern alarms changed to merry meetings, our dreadful marches to delightful measures. Grim-visaged war hath smoothed his wrinkled front, and now instead of mounting barbed steeds to fright the souls of fearful adversaries, he capers nimbly in a lady's chamber to the lascivious pleasing of a love. But I, that am not shaped for sportive tricks, nor made to court an amorous looking-glass, I, that am rudely stamped and want love's majesty, to strut before a wanton ambling nymph, I, that am curtailed of this fair proportion, cheated of feature by dissembling nature, deformed, unfinished, sent before my time, into this breathing world scarce half made up, and that so lamely and unfashionable that dogs bark at me as I halt by them, why, I, in this weak piping time of peace, have no delight to pass away the time, unless to spy on my shadow in the sun, and descant on my own defor and descant on mine own deformity. And therefore, since I cannot prove a lover, to entertain these fair well-spoken days, I am determined to prove a villain, and hate the idle pleasures of these days. Plots have I laid, inductions dangerous, by drunken prophecies, libels and dreams, to set my brother Clarence and the king in deadly hate the one against the other. And if King Edward be as true and just, as I am subtle, false and treacherous, this day should Clarence closely be mewed up about a prophecy which says that G of Edward's heirs the murderer shall be. Dive thoughts down to my soul, here Clarence comes, and then Clarence shows up. This bit here, which was kind of telling of uh, attitudes of the time, I suppose. Um, Make peace with God, for you must die, my lord. Hast thou that holy feeling in thy soul to counsel me to make my peace with God? And art thou yet to thy own soul so blind that thou wilt war with God by murdering me? Ah, sirs, consider, he that set you on to do this deed will hate you for this deed. What shall we do? Relent and save your souls. Relent? Tis cowardly and womanish. To relent. Sometimes relenting is the best thing you can do, mate. Here we have one of the best your mum lines I've ever seen, courtesy of William Shakespeare. Thy mother's name is ominous to children. Wow, savage. We also get a reference to Sir James Blunt, who is presumably beautiful. Um, we don't like James Blunt, not because it's cool not to like James Blunt, but because he went on a meat-only diet to annoy his vegan friends, and then um, got scurvy, so yeah. Uh, Act 5, Scene 2 takes place at the camp near Tamworth, which is very cool, because I'm originally from Tamworth, and uh, because we have the Battle of Bosworth basically happens here, and, and you know that was one of the places we used to go to on school trips all the time when I was a kid. We have a few great speeches around here that I want to share, so King Richard III here, he says, Give me another horse, bind up my wounds, have mercy, Jesus, soft I did but dream. O oh, coward conscience, how dost thou afflict me? The lights burn blue, it is now dead midnight. Cold fearful drops stand on my trembling flesh. What do I fear? Myself? There's none else by. Richard loves Richard, that is I and I. Is there a murderer here? No. Yes, I am. Then fly. What? From myself? Great, wheeze, great reason why, lest I revenge. What, myself upon myself? Alack, I love myself. Wherefore, for any good that I myself have done unto myself, 
Oh no, alas, I rather hate myself for hateful deeds committed by myself. I am a villain, yet I lie, I am not. Fool of thyself speak well, fool do not flatter. My conscience hath, my conscience hath a thousand several tongues, and every tongue brings in a several tale, and every tale condemns me for a villain. Perjury, perjury in the highest degree. Murder, stern murder in the direst degree. All several sins, all used in each degree. Throng to the bar, crying all guilty, guilty. I shall despair, there is no creature loves me. And if I die, no soul will pity me. Nay, wherefore should they, since that I myself find in myself no pity to myself? Methought the souls of all that I had murdered came to my tent, and every one did threat tomorrow's vengeance on the head of Richard. And then I want to read this as well. This is his oration to his soldiers. More than I have said, loving countrymen, the leisure and enforcement of the time forbids to dwell upon. Yet remember this, God and our good cause fight upon our side. The prayers of holy saints and wronged souls, like high-reared bullocks, stand before our faces. Richard, except those whom we fight against, had rather have us win than him they follow. For what is he they follow? Truly, gentlemen, a bloody tyrant and a homicide, one raised in blood and one in blood established, one that made means to come by what he hath and slaughtered those that were the means to help him. A base, foul stone made precious by the foil of, in of England's chair, where he is falsely set, one that hath ever been God's enemy. Then, if you fight against God's enemy, God will in justice ward you as his soldiers, if you do sweat to put a tyrant down. You sleep in peace, the tyrant being slain. If you do fight against your country's foes, your country's fat shall pay your pains the higher. If you do fight and safeguard of your wives, your wives shall welcome home the conquerors. If you do free your children from the sword, your children's children quits it in your age. Then, in the name of God and all these rights, advance your standards, draw your willing swords. For me, the ransom of my bold attempt shall be this cold corpse on the earth's cold face. But if I thrive, the gain of my attempt, the least of you shall share his part thereof. Sound drums and trumpets boldly and cheerfully, God and St. George, Richmond and Victory. And then we get scene four and five, the field of battle. And this kind of all happens quite quickly. So I'm just going to read it out to you. I'm sure, obviously, if you're watching it in a play, it will be uh, different. But so Catesby says, rescue, my lord of Norfolk, rescue, rescue. The king enacts more wonders than a man, daring and opposite to every danger. His horse is slain and all on foot he fights, seeking for Richmond, and seeking for Richmond in the throat of death. Rescue, fair lord, or else the day is lost. Alarums, enter King Richard. King Richard the Third, a horse, a horse, my kingdom for a horse. Catesby, withdraw, my lord, I'll help you to a horse. And King Richard the Third again, he says, Slave, I have set my life upon a cast, and I will stand the hazard of the die. I think there be six Richmonds in the field. Five have I slain today instead of him. A horse, a horse, my kingdom for a horse. Alarm, enter Richmond, enter Richard and Richmond, they fight. Richard is slain. Retreat and flourish. And then we sort of get to the end bits, and it pretty much is, ends almost straight away, but, um, the final, final little speech here by Richmond is worth, uh, worth reading as well. Inter their bodies as becomes their births. Proclaim a pardon to the soldiers fled that in submission will return to us. And then, as we have taken the sacrament, we will, uni we will unite the white rose and the red. Smile heaven upon this fair conjunction that longer frowned upon their enmity. What traitor hears me and says not amen? England hath long been mad and scarred herself. The brother blindly shed the brother's blood. The fatherly rashly slaughtered his own son. The son, compelled, being butcher to the sire. All this divided York and Lancaster, divided in their dire division. Oh, now let Richmond and Elizabeth, the true succeeders of each royal house, by God's fair ordinance conjoin together, and let their heirs, God, if thy will be so, enrich the time to come with smooth-faced peace, with smiling plenty and fair prosperous days. Abate the edge of traitors, gracious Lord, that would reduce these bloody days again and make poor England weep in streams of blood. Let them not live to taste this land's increase, that would with treason wound the wood with trees and wound this fair land's peace. Now civil wounds are stopped, peace lives again, that she may long live here, God say amen. And I like the, the, the civil wounds bit there also might, reminds me of the line in the prologue of uh, Romeo and Juliet where civil blood doth make civil hands unclean. But yeah, as you can probably tell, I did rather enjoy this. I mean, it helped that I'm interested in history anyway and like the fact that I've been to the site of the Battle of Bosworth and you know, I come from Tamworth probably helped. But also I just thought this is one of the more beautifully written of Shakespeare's plays as well. So overall I gave it pretty solid, you know, like 4.25 out of 5. 
So there we have it. That is what I made of King Richard III by William Shakespeare. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read this play or seen it um, and what you think of it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more and we'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.